Hey everybody, this is Trevor Psycho One McDougal, and I am sitting right here with this man. This guy is the creator of this band right here. This is Warrior Angel. This is Chapter One. Uh, chapter Two came out uh, a while back. I kind of missed it, but I'm playing catch up now. So, would you like to introduce yourself? Hey, hi guys. Um, thank you, Trevor, for having me on your show. I um, yes, my name is Dusan Dusan Nikolic. I am actually they used to call me Nick. Uh, in Warriors. Um, I am a singer songwriter uh, from Europe, um, ex Yugoslavia, and, um, you know, and we actually came here uh, at 83 in September uh, with a contract to uh, get the record done. And uh, I started uh, 1973, if I remember. That's a long time. Long <laughs> and, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, then when we, you know, we used to have all these go- great bands, you know, from Europe, uh, you know, and we just, uh, you know, we had a uh, different uh, attitude towards music, the North Americans, uh, it's more, it's just a different in a way, because the Europe is very, uh, it's kind of cradle of rock. And uh, to be honest, it's uh, very interesting to uh, be part of that uh, part of the world. When you got here to Canada, um, do you have any uh, favorite bands that you toured with, with the Warriors, uh, Road Stories? Give us something fun. Oh, yeah. I, uh, we had a, actually a very interesting, we used to do with all this, with, like we, we know this Helix, we know Lee Aaron, we know, um, we actually toured with the um, Nazareth, a British band. Uh, we had a good relation with Iron Maiden. Uh, our producer was from um, uh, Scorpions, Michael Wagner, and uh, he's now retired, but one of the really good, great producers sorry fabulous producers mm-hmm. or on a heavy metal we record this thing here in uh, 83 uh then that's the first um first canadian album we used to have already we done actually we did uh, finish uh two albums in uh, belgrade uh it was a ep or four songs and um lp uh, first album of, of Warriors, or co- we call them in a Serbian R- Ratnici. You could definitely tell when a band was, you know, from North America, meaning U.S. or Canada, compared to, you know, overseas or across the pond, as they used to refer to it as. There oh, yeah. was There was a difference, and it was exciting <laughs> to hear that ah. over here. Oh, it's yeah. kind of like when it's- punk invaded... You know, it comes from Britain right. and it hit here. It, it was it was a shockwave to the music scene. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. But let, let's get to what we're actually meant to be here for. Uh, we want to tell people about these wonderful albums. Um, this is uh, it's called uh, Griffin One Point Two Nine Chapter One and Chapter Two. Yes. What can you tell me about these two wonderful, absolutely great, in my opinion, albums? Uh, it's interesting. Uh, to be honest, the, the albums uh, are results of uh, my the passing of my uh, dear wife uh, uh, four years ago. Yeah, I was in that dark place. Uh, and the musician, when it's musician, actually, it's as artist. But uh, uh, musicians are very sensitive when it comes to the... Uh, any any um, stress or in 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 life or anything that uh, anything that makes uh, unfortunately this life hard to go through or life to go through you know it's very hard to go as a result uh, I start to dream the songs uh, uh, the songs came in my dreams with the melody the lyrics everything I have a for some reason, I sometimes I prepare because I know I don't fabricate the songs. I'm, I'm actually uh, way that songs comes to me uh, naturally, and I uh, then I take the, my recorder. I remember what I uh, dream about it, and a melody, and a song, and uh, lyrics. Everything seems to be. I was kind of uh, 
a connection in between the spirit, her spiritual world and my world here, our world, where actually, because it's when you live with something for so long and you're becoming, uh, your souls are becoming intertwined together, they, uh, uh, you, you really uh, lose half of your, yourself. And, uh, and then that's what they said. When somebody passes close to you, half of your soul is gone. I really uh, created this most beautiful songs um, that actually was a gift from her. And I believe so. Uh, that's mean we have these 19 beautiful songs uh, uh, and uh, the songs that were really st strong and powerful. Uh, they were, and they are actually uh, a reminder of uh, of that beautiful love I have, and and it's and passion, uh, and unfortunately, uh, uh, denial, sorrow, and um, and, pain. and a pain, and, and in the end, very strong anger. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. Like uh, you mentioned the two songs, and you and I have talked in the past, and when I listened to Chapter Two. Which I actually enjoyed more than chapter one. I don't, not that I'm trying to diminish chapter one, but they're both a real true journey. And when yeah. I listen to them, like when I listen to chapter one, as I said in my review of the album, you can actually feel the heartfelt pain and the hurt and the anguish that you, the creator, were going through at the time. You know, yeah. and when I listen to chapter two, I, I kind of felt that like a step by step. You know, psychologists say that there's like seven steps to grief or 12 steps to sobriety, you know, those kind of things. Oh, yeah, you can yeah. hear those steps in chapter two. There was the anger. You can hear that moment or in my head anyways, which is sometimes a scary place. You can hear that moment where the funeral was over, the family were gone, and you were alone. Yeah. You know, at least that's the way I felt the song. And it just kept going through with each song. I could feel the different steps, except for two songs. I, I could, you know, and I asked you about them. And that was Airborne and uh, Fantasy Reality. And you kind of chuckled at me and said those were actually two previous Warrior songs. And you worked them in. You reworked them for, you know, your 2021 release of Chapter 2. And I thought, then it clicks, you know, they're... Yeah. You know, so I don't know, maybe my ears are better than I thought they were. I picked up on that with those two songs. That's kind of ironic. Yes, but, you uh, did. Why don't you tell me, because when you're recording this album, you have to go through all these emotions again. Can you tell me the process of, of what you were going through at the time? At the time, um, I started first, I was in that, uh, that kind of, I felt like, I'm stuck in one glass bowl and looking people flying all around like it's in incredible speed, but I, I was frozen. I almost like I was frozen in time. I couldn't react. Yeah. The only thing I was seeing I was in because I cannot get, I mean, people will try to, you know, people try to say good words to you and say, but nobody knows actually how you, what you're going through. And uh, you know they're polite, but you know they don't they don't understand because the grief it's personal. It's very and, awkward when you know somebody's going through that. What to say? I get that. Yes. Uh, you you felt the numbness. You felt the and and you you you're in denial. You you're still feeling wanting to be with that person, and 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 uh, then the denial starts to get. Uh, into this um, anger, because this the anger, because you know why, why, why that person, why, why me, you know, like, uh, and and then you starting to feel sorry, and that sorrow it's so long and it's so hard, like it's not just it psychologically it really kills you, and in that moment actually you start to, especially as the creators. You, I just in the like first eight months, I was working uh, uh, to try to uh, stay alive. To be honest, and uh, I, I had the strength to through her spirit to actually get this connection 
by creating this song uh, through the through the uh, my dreams. As I said, in the middle of the night, I wake up screaming, and I said, "God, you know." What is such an incredible pain? But at the same time, I can feel that I can really feel that music. I can feel, I can hear the music in my head. And I can hear this, uh, 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 the whole melody, music, the, the lyrics. And I just spit them on my uh, recorder. I just turn on another side with my tears and my sweat on because I you almost wake up from a nightmare, you know? Yeah. And then you. Grab this record. I grab this recorder and I immediately, you know, sing the song uh, on a recorder, and then go sleep, calm down. It's almost like a weight when, uh, like, tons of, tons and tons of grief just went through you, and you're now released, mm-hmm. you know, and start to and you fall asleep. In the morning, I wake up, have my breakfast, and start to work. Took pen and paper old-fashioned way you know and get the guitar and start to uh, sing the song and uh, record and everything and I said and that lasts for uh, eight months that means this 19 songs came some people said yeah that was a uh, uh, interesting analogy they will say this is kind of your terrible says no it's not that good at all it's something that I really uh, uh, re- uh, relive all the time. Every every time I go through this process, I relive that that anger, that agony, that the fear, uh, you know, that pain. Well, and, that's because, I mean, when somebody records a song, you I mean, maybe you do. I could be wrong, but most people don't do it in one take. So if you're recording something that's really emotional and you're doing it over and over and over, either you become extremely numb. And the yeah. song loses all feeling, yeah. or it gets really hard. Like if it was me, I'd be smashing the guitar every night just to get the anxiety out. Yeah, it's this is that's unfortunately the. I mean, when you go through this process, as I said, lots of people, lots of musicians are, are gone through this process. We all human, like we all human beings. I'm blessed that I I received this uh, nineteen songs through my dream. In a way. This is just a one part of reality, the life that goes on after, after you lose somebody. Yeah, well, as I say, we're, we're just here for a little blip. You know, it may seem like an eternity to us, but it, it's a blip in the grand scheme of things. But uh, oh, yeah. just, just so we don't get absolutely too serious, because, you know, we still yeah. want to be able to smile and have some fun. Um, sure. You know, you were talking about artists creating, especially singers. And I've heard a lot of stories about singers, how they can be... Uh, uh, or you've heard of LSD, I'm sure, lead singer disease. You know, they, they could be whiny little uh, people. They could be demanding. They could be, you know, I'm not saying this about you, not at all. But uh, I've heard lots of stories about lead singers. And you kind of hit the nail on the head saying that they are um, emotional. And if people are looking for, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll in these albums, you're going to get the rock because there, there's some great music here. Absolutely, um, sex and drugs, uh, party songs. No, this this is a this is a journey. It's worth checking out. It's a great album. Both of them are. Um, but if you're looking for that, go listen to you know Motley Crue or you know the Erotics or something like that. If you want those kind of party tunes, because you know that they're good for that. I have no problem with party tunes when you're in the mood for it. This is a, two great conceptual albums that tell a journey and. You know, I, I got to ask, is there anybody that really helped you with this on your journey that you want to send a, a, a shout out to or a thank you or anything like that? Because as, as much as yeah. you are from the heart, you know. Yeah, yeah. The, the, I have incredible crew uh, and they're still there for me. If, if this COVID maybe uh, disappears, I hope so. Okay. Oh, yes. And maybe we can start to go and do some gigs and stuff like that. I, I have this this incredible two albums that are like uh, dear to me, and uh, and of course uh, I want to thank first number one. I want to thank John de Albuquerque, his uh, rhythm guitar player. Mm-hmm. He's a dear friend of mine who helped me first actually to. I actually called him and told him, "Listen, man, I have the songs. I want you to come and let's uh, polish them." And uh, really, uh, he was working his regular job, and plus he came here and uh, 
in uh, my uh, little studio and we were working a uh, uh, night after his work he come back he came here around six o'clock and we will sit down and work over the songs over the just polishing them over the over the until one or two in the morning and then he will go back to work and come back again it's like it was a like four months so he said you put me through hell mm-hmm. <laughs> and I, I said yeah but you see what we did we did incredible stuff and then of course uh, my ex guitar player very good friend of mine Soran Konjevic from Warriors he uh, suggested me to go to a studio because I was wondering what studio when I uh, get uh, you know I'm gonna start to record this uh, really incredible t- 19 songs uh, and uh, he mentioned uh, my friend Michael Shatton, uh, his, uh, actually our friend Michael Shatton. Uh, he's a drummer and a singer from uh, Wong Groove. Wong Groove. Uh, is, and uh, yeah, he, he is like a very, very talented person, very good friend of mine. Um, and we uh, just uh, hit on, uh, I mean, that song, so he hit on the nails, like uh, he, he became my producer and very, very, very talented producer. And uh, as me as executive, executive producer, I, I help him to just uh, steering to uh, certain uh, places where I want to hear exactly what I want to hear. And, uh, and unfortunately, that's what you said. That was when, you know, songwriters are sometimes very uh, ego driven, but uh, this is just because I want to, these are my special nighting songs. They come from my heart and I want to be sure that they're properly done. Yeah. He did a fantastic job. Like this guy is amazing. And I, uh, Trevor Jackson, he's a solo guitar player. He came, young guy, he came from uh, uh, actually south uh, down on, uh, from California, San Diego. Hmm. And uh, he lives there with his family. Uh, but uh, actually, John Albuquerque, uh, my guitar, uh, rhythm guitar player, he actually, he was a good friend of me, uh, you know, Trevor. And he said, he said, I have this guy that you, he's really, he's only 21 years old. You know, that's what four years ago. And I said, and, you know, three years ago. And, I, and he said, like, but he's such a talented person, incredible fast. He's incredible fast guitar player. And his finger just fly. And for me, when I heard, I gave him a couple of songs just, you know, that he can try to uh, play on it. And he sent me a, 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 again uh, in the MP3. And, and I, was, I was listening and his in kind of ideas of solos. Unbelievable. Like, I just, that's the guy I want. This is a melodical, but it's very progressive, you know, millennia kind of 2020 music you know it's like something that the kids these days they really like to hear that uh, very nice progressive rock solos you know Co- uh, and i co- incorporate this uh, his style into my style in that when this 80s music i call it a very a very classic rock mm-hmm. and uh, and i was amazed we were all astonished when he came here and uh, he did his, uh, you know, seven days. He was here living with us here. And then he would go every day to in a recording studio. He was just, uh, he was like a freaking incredible, a speedo. I mean, unbelievable. Such a fast, such a, and beautiful guy. Incredibly smart and, and uh, dear to me. A really nice guy. And then we have a Lauren Sokolov, bass guitar player. Very nice, down to earth person, very calm, quiet, incredible. Uh, you know, plays with fingers, you know, it's like his bass, and he's a very incredible bass player. We are incredible friends. Uh, Terry Rayner, he's a drummer who uh, actually uh, did six songs, drum six songs on the album, and then Michael Shatton uh, did the rest of the songs drumming. Uh, then we have this Don Baird, uh, he keyboard player, and he did he used this Hammond, very classic Hammond uh, 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 on uh, on my album. And I think we, you you have this uh, Rick Anderson who is a mix engineer and drum setup and track tracking. And in the end, what we did, we finally when we finish all this product after a year and a half, 
we actually, we went together in this Toronto studio with uh, Noah Mintz, uh, his mastering engineer, and from Locker Studio mm-hmm. and uh, Locker Channel. Anyway, it was such incredible. And of course, the, all this incredible work was such a satisfied. Uh, we, I actually uh, put through the CD Baby uh, and CD Baby actually did a good job promoting this uh, two albums, uh, actually putting them through all this uh, media. Uh, and I hear so many times when I go on, um, I have my warriorangel.ca uh, website where you can actually see all the videos, you can see, you can download the music, you can uh, go through YouTube through uh, my a couple of videos I have from Warrior Angel. Uh, then you can go uh, through, uh, you know, go scroll through the menu and see Warriors. Then you see history, uh, discography, uh, this three albums of the, with the Warriors uh, and all the gold, very good, interesting from our touring, uh, Warrior touring uh, from in U.S. and Canada. Uh, a couple of videos, like four videos. Well, I'll make there. sure that there's a link in the description below this uh, video interview so everybody can get there and check it out. Oh, yeah, it's a really crazy. It's a really good. I mean, I, I, I really I'm so glad I went through with these guys through, uh, you know, rough and good. And, you know, we, we you know, sometimes fist fights, sometimes uh, uh, hugs. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, yeah, we, we were like uh, in 80s, Bro- rock and roll. we were brothers. Yeah, we were really brothers for in anything. In, in and we really give for each other anything. Uh, now the things have changed, uh, you know, it's new generation, new music. We've all gotten older. Honest, you know, I really like to go on a stage and I really rock still, even doesn't matter if I'm string grandpa, I still I can do it. You know, I can still sing my my, my eyes out. <laughs> hey, if, if Mick Jagger and, you know, David Coverdale can still get on stage at their age, yeah. why not you, right? Not me, I'm only 10 years younger than they are. There you go. <laughs> See, why not? Why not? Um, so I got to ask them, what's the future for Warrior Angel? Is there going to be a chapter three? Do you want a tour? All the above? Is there right going to be a completely separate story? Or is there is there more stories coming from your beloved in your Wait, state? Uh, I think you're right. I mean, it's, uh, I, uh, as I said, we're talking about, you know, Pain, you know, when you lose somebody, pain always stays with you. The pain is going to just slowly diminish by time, going to slowly, it's going to be still painful. It's still going to be there, but uh, it's going to be less and less. Uh, that's, a, it's a progress of, a progression of living and uh uh, uh, we just go with life, and uh, if you're lucky, you meet a nice lady uh, or whoever, and uh, then you uh, you continue your life and uh, and find your new muse. And uh, but uh, the person that uh, you spend time uh, always going to stay until you die there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And with that being said, I mean we've got some great songs on here. Um, but I would like to ask you, you know, like I said, in part two, you can hear your journey going along. And the one song you have in there is called Round and Round. And I think that's a perfect song to end this interview with, because in that song, I'm going to paraphrase this. Um, you basically said the life goes round and round. And in this life and the next, I know you will be by my side. You know, yeah. so it's like your soulmates, you're always predestined to find each other in each life yeah. cycle that we go through. Yes. And I, I think that's a great way to end it because you finally come at the end of that chapter, the acceptance, she's still there with you, you know, in pain and in love. And you know you're gonna see each other again. You have faith in that. And I think that's a beautiful end to the story. Chronologically, uh uh, when I was working on Omen and Songs, anything that came, and if you see it in my CD sleeve, you can have, you can take this out of the sleeve, you can take actually the, the little pamphlet of the little uh, booklet with your with lyrics, and when you go inside the uh, lyrics, you're going to see on the bottom, on the right side, of uh, it's a date of every song that came in uh, on, uh, uh, you know, when the actual date. 
right there. Yes. Yep. And uh, in some, uh, I did actually, after I finished all the songs, I put them in a chronology, uh, the, the way how I felt, uh, I felt in that moment. Uh, and, uh, you know, sometimes they're mixed, some, uh, but sometimes sometimes the songs are in a proper, but in the end, what I did actually create the story uh, mm -hmm. of the, as, a, as a storyteller, I create a story from chapter one on chapter two, uh, beginning of this of the album, the first chapter one. It's very dark album. It's very, uh, as I said, very heavy. Uh, I can call it even very hard heavy metal, where with uh, you know this uh, this very um, deep darkness evil kind of things, the anger that you see that you want to actually, when you listen, it's almost like a, every song has this uh, rumbling song, like rumbling sound, like a, you know, doom, 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 doom. it's like a constant rumbling sound. And uh, it always keeps you on your feet, kind of always kept you, because you know when next song comes, this song gonna be even stronger and it's gonna be more pounding. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the reason why, because the anger cre uh, created by your feelings, it's so amplified that actually you create it almost like a heartbeat. It's constant heartbeat. And, and in the end, you slow, slows down and looks for the, some certain light uh, in, a, in the lyrics and the songs. Actually, you always try and beg for that light that's going to come in the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. And through really? all the songs, like like a falling angel, like a, a, ri a rise, uh, you know, uh, I can't live without you. It's all this, all these heavy songs. Then you have this incredible uh, ballad that is for me one of the most most dear. For me, this is the the best ballad I ever wrote, and uh, it's step by step, and it's so it's just so beautiful. And even when you are seeing it in the, on the YouTube, on a, uh, as I said, you can see the symbolism in a, in a, in a, in a, this uh, bridge, water, uh, nature. You know, walking step by step through the bridge. You know, it's all. And then you have, of course, that quiet place where you 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 end up and you think about it about her and in the cemetery and a very very calm, calm, relaxed part. But then, then you have again this agony going on. It's a rolling through the through the albums constantly, with a little bit of uh, in a couple of moments in a couple of songs you have almost suicidal. In, um, you know, ideas like you, you can hear this guy is really want to kill himself. He cannot stand anymore being alone in the dark. And, and finally, uh, he's trying to come out, and that and somebody is telling him, you know, from above, uh, and it's through the, his spirit. He's telling him, no, it's everything's going to be fine. She's going to be there. Yeah, I think you, you hear that in chapter you, two as well. Yes, and in chapter two, actually, creates all this. Uh, finally, it's becoming that anger is becoming more pain, but then slows down. And and finally, the last song that I was uh, with chapter two, it was this uh, fi finalizing this idea of okay, now I am on the uh, in in the middle of a, in that I can see the light, and I know it's going to be always that pain but you know what i need to live that life i need to continue living and creating and uh, and that's where uh the song round around came about yeah and like i said the, i just i really like that line that you'll be beside each other again yeah it's a, as a soulmate so yeah that's yeah. Uh, it's I think a, that's, you know that's great because you have that faith you know whether you're a spiritual person or not you can be with that person anytime you want because they're still part of your heart. They're always going to be part of your life, whether they're physically there or not. And I think that's a, that's a great way to to end this today because it pretty much ends the story up to that point. And yes. you know, I, I hope for more Warrior Angel. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a Griffin chapter, but at least more music because I really like what you've created here musically as well because I am just a music fan. You know, yes. I, I can 
sympathize and understand your your plight with the story of the uh, of the Griffin chapters, uh, you know, set. I guess if you want to call it that beautiful yeah. albums, beautiful story. Um, I can see that you have come out the other side. The pain may be there, but you've learned how to live with it. And I think that's it. The pain doesn't go away. It's something you learn to cope with. It's yeah. forever going to be part of you. And and Deshaun, I just want to thank you so much for sitting down with us today and joining us. And, uh, you know, again, I got to tell people, if you don't have these albums or have not heard these albums, what are you waiting for? Because the, the, these are good. And, uh, you know, like I said, if you're unsure, check out the links below. You can read about them uh, on the CGCM website. Dusan, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I, I hope you have a wonderful day. Yes, thank you for having me. And I really appreciate uh, your kind words. Uh, and uh, thank you for uh, really enjoying my music because uh, this is uh, something that uh, is going to stay forever there and uh, people are going to enjoy it. And they, uh, and I am thankful for people that they, uh, they're listening to my songs and they love them. And, um, and uh, thank you again. <laughs> Not a problem. You have yourself a wonderful day, and hopefully we will talk soon. Yes, of course, because the third album is coming. Let's hope so. Thanks a lot.